Hey everybody, welcome to part 6 in our series on making custom ribbons in Microsoft Access. In this video we're going to discuss contextual tabs. And what I'm referring to when I say contextual tabs is when we have a static tab and we want to add some extra tabs to it based on what we're doing at the moment. For example, Microsoft has tons of these. If we pull up a form in Design View, we'll notice that we get a, an additional tab set called Form Design Tools. And within there, there are three additional tabs. When we change our form view back to regular form view, those tabs disappear again. And that's what we want to, to try to emulate today. So there are several ways we can get here. Um, contextual tabbing itself being probably the best one, but I wanted to just run through a couple other options you have. So one thing you can do is you can build a different ribbon for each form for which you want to show different tabs on. I uh, don't think I care a whole lot for this method, but for instance, let's pull up a form and design view and pull up our property sheet at the bottom of the property listings there is an item called ribbon name and we can select from here which ribbon we want to show when this form is on the screen so you could if you wanted to build a different ribbon for each form you wanted to display I don't care for this method at all uh, it increases the number of ribbons you have to build I um, expect there would be a lot of duplication between the ribbons you know, a lot of tabs you'd want to have on each ribbon which means you'd be repeating a bunch of uh, a bunch of XML over the place. And if you ever needed to change that, that that static section, you'd have a ton of ribbons to modify. So it's it's not very extensible, and you have lots of XML to deal with. Other thing you can do would be to use the uh, get visible attribute to show and hide certain tabs based on the form that you have displayed. So let's take a look at in one of our previous videos. Let me expand this. One of our previous videos, we talked about the get visible attribute calling some VBA to decide whether or not to show a, a control. You can, you, can, you can use this on a button, a tab, a, a group, and you could uh, work up some VBA that paid attention to which forms are loaded on screen, maybe use the, uh, the, the get focus events to, to call this get visible method and, and show or hide certain tabs. But all you've done though is you've, you've exchanged complexity on your XML side for complexity on the VBA side, and I think that you would have uh, difficulty when you have multiple forms on the screen at the same time. So again, I'm not very excited about that method either. I think contextual tabbing is our best bet for building, well, contextual tabs. Imagine that. So when we build contextual tabs, we have a little bit of extra XML and we have zero extra VBA. And Microsoft Access just handles it for us. It pays attention to what forms are on the screen and and shows and hides these tabs for us. No, no additional effort on our part. So let's take a look at the syntax for a contextual tab. Pull our XML editor up over here. This is the block that you'll want to insert in your ribbon when you have contextual tabs. We have a contextual tabs tag, and there's the ender there. Then within there, you define a tab set, and this is the money part right here. This IDMSO tab set form report extensibility. That's what tells the ribbon that everything inside of this tab set is a contextual tab. So within this tab set, you can have one or more tabs. So here we have a tab. I built a new tab. I've given it a unique ID. I'm giving it a label that's going to display on the ribbon format. And then I put some built in groups in here a group text formatting, group rich text, and group clipboard. So these, these are things I'm going to want to show in my contextual tab when my uh, formatted text form displays. Again, you can refer to uh, an earlier uh, video in this series when we, we built that form. But we'll show it here in just a couple minutes. So first, let me show you what I don't think we should do with these contextual tabs. I'm going to pull up an existing tab. This is, there. This is the developer tab that we built in um, the video one of this series, and we've been adding to it ever since. I'm going to open up a section here and I'm going to copy in our contextual tabs right there. Okay, again, I want to emphasize this is not what I think we should do with these, but I want to show you what happens and why. I don't think it's a good idea. So save that record. We have to close our database in order to reload the ribbon. Now let's pull up form formatted text and design view and go down to the ribbon name and we're going to put our developer ribbon as the ribbon to show okay and 
and save that. Go to our home tab, pull up our format menu, and it's the same, we haven't modified it. Pull up our formatted text and look, we get our new contextual tab for format. We close formatted text and we lose it. So one of the reasons I don't like this method is what if you have a need for a different set of contextual tabs on different forms. In other words, you want one set of contextual tabs on your form and menu and a different set on your form formatted text. That other method where I added contextual tabs to my base ribbon that all the forms are going to use, I lose that ability to have different sets of contextual tabs on different forms. Okay, so I'm going to uh, head over here to our form uses ribbons. And again, if you look at a previous video, probably I think it's the first video in this series where we built this form specifically for the purpose of editing our uses ribbons table. Take that out of there. And as well, while I'm here, I'm going to take these two groups out of that tab as well. What I think we should be doing with these is putting a different tab set, a different contextual tab set on different ribbons. And I'll show you how this works. It's pretty cool. First off, let's take a look at the things that we don't have. The things that we do have, we have our ordinary wrapper. Okay, we have the XML definition. We have the, the schema definition. So let's take a look at the things that we don't have on these contextual tab ribbons. One right here. Let's go back to the previous one. Expand this sort of. I do not have this onload event on my contextual tab. I don't need it. And to be clear, the reason I don't have an onload event on this contextual tab is I don't have a need to interact with any of these controls from my VBA. I'm not. I don't intend to do any invalidating of controls or invalidating of the ribbon in order to change any get visible properties or enable properties or whatnot. If I did have con custom controls on this contextual tab and think that I would need to invalidate them to change something about them, an image or visible or enabled property, then I would indeed need an onload event right here. However, remember the onload event, let's run back over here, I'm executing this on ribbon load method in my VBA and we're going to run over to our code and take a look at that. What that is doing is it's giving us a global reference in VBA to that ribbon. So if I need to be able to refer to, let's head back over here, if I need to be able to refer to my contextual ribbon in VBA, I'm going to need to give it a different name in my VBA. So I would have an onload event here, but I would refer to, back over to our code window again, I would make another method here, give it a slightly different name, and I would give that contextual tab a different name. Okay, I would have a, a another dimension up here, another public dimension of an iRibbon UI. This would have a different name, you know, global ribbon format maybe. And then in my VBA, I would be able to invalidate whichever ribbon I need to based on what's going on in the code or what's going on on the screen. Okay, so that would be a reason why you would have an onload here. I just want to make sure we're, we're clear on why we don't in, in my current situation simply don't need it. I also don't have right here next to the ribbon tag, I don't have this start from scratch attribute. Remember the start from scratch attribute tells the ribbon, tells access whether or not to keep all the default tabs right that access has built into it or to get rid of them. Okay, If you put a start from scratch on a contextual tab ribbon it will wipe out all of your static tabs that you have on your base ribbon. All right? And you'll end up with just this contextual tab and nothing else. And I would argue that if you want to do that, that's not contextual tabbing, that's just a completely different ribbon. Make yourself a completely different ribbon and, and have it loaded for that form only. It gets you to the same place except uh, you know, it's just it's, what you're doing here is not contextual tabs if you're doing that method. And then inside of here we have the contextual tab block that we just talked about a minute ago. So I've got one type of, uh, I've got one set of, so I have one set of controls here I want to use for my formatted text form. I've called this ribbon formatted text and I've got my uh, group text formatting, group rich text, and a group clipboard in here. I've also built a second contextual tab so that we can see the difference between two forms. We can see two forms loading different contextual tabs. 
And this one I have a completely different set of controls. These uh, are, are nothing specific, really. They're just a couple of different buttons just for the purpose of showing that we have a different set of controls and a different tab up there. I've called this one Main Menu because we want to attach it to our Main Menu. Let's close that. And then let's head into Design Mode and our Formatted Text Form and choose our Formatted Text Ribbon for the, our ribbon name here. Save it. Do the same thing for more main form main menu. We'll choose the main menu ribbon we just built. Save. Now I made some changes to the XML in there just a second ago, so we're going to close our database, reopen it, make sure all that's got been loaded. Head over to our home tab. Okay, remember this home and maintenance is the, the developer tab that we built. And we're going to add contextual tabs to it. Open our form main menu. And there we have our contextual tab set called main and there are the buttons on it. This label is coming from here. Whoops. Okay. Whatever form you have this ribbon attached to, that's going to give you the tab set name. And then that is the label attribute we had inside the tab or on the tab. Let's open our formatted text form. And there we have the formatted text ribbon. You can see here, based on which form has the focus, Access displays the correct contextual tab. And this is all happening without any VBA on our part. It's just a little bit of XML and that one property setting, that ribbon name property on the form. That's why I like this contextual tabbing so much, because there's not a lot of work for us to do. It's, it's easier for us not to mess it up, quite frankly. So to review what I'm suggesting here, we have a set of tabs we want to show on every form in our application. And in our example, it's the Home tab through the maintenance tab. And I have those in our uses ribbons table as the developer tab. Remember here we had to start from scratch equals false, so pulled in all of our default access uh, ribbon, uh, tabs. And then we had additional tabs that we built onto here, which is our home and our maintenance. And we have those set as in our backstage area under options, under current database, and under navigation, or under ribbon name. We have that set here to show all the time. Okay, I can't start it here. And then I'm suggesting that for any contextual tabs you want to show on a specific form, that those are extra rows in your uses ribbons table. Here we have one is called formatted text and one called main menu. And you attach those in design mode as your ribbon name down here. So that's contextual tabbing in a nutshell. I think it's uh, it's pretty straightforward and it's not terribly complicated. I like that there's not any VBA for us to mess with. It's all XML and, and a simple property setting on a form and you get quite a bit of functionality out of it. And uh, it's just another method we can use to make our, our uh, applications look a lot more professional. I hope you got something out of this. And as usual, I'll have the a link to the XML in the description of the video down below and uh, links to um, my website where all the other videos can be found um, all grouped together by a series and I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.